All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do a quick video on the front side uh, concepts of mills, dagger, drives, and concepts that people sometimes get confused. A lot of times in football, you have to understand exactly the terminology that people are using so you can understand exactly what they are talking about because a lot of times people just throw the term terminology out there and say, hey, that's mills, that's dagger, that's drive. So I'm going to go through those on the front side today so <clears throat> you can understand that. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, <clears throat> Sideline Replay Company. We use at Bishop Kenny High School. I've used them for the last five or six years at my previous stop as head coach. I used them. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, uh, great customer service, then GameStrat is the way to go. Dome Hats, a headwear company we use uh, at Bishop Kenny High School. I use them with play fast football. Every stop I've been at in my football career for the last 16 years, I've used Dome Hats. This is one of our custom Crusader hats. BK logo, Crusader logo, fitted hat. Dome logo on the side, so you can build your own hat the way you want to. It can be fitted, Velcro, snapback. You can change the style of the hat. You design it however you want, completely customizable. Stock hats suck. All right, Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for uh, shirts like this, our coaches gear, our sideline gear on Friday nights, our uniforms are distributed from them. Uh, we use them as a player store, a fan store, so it's kind of a one-stop shop for everything you need in your program, so check out Baker Sports. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. They set up in the racks that are currently in your weight room. So uh, you can use them in season. You can use them off season. Um, you can use them as part of your workout. You don't need to have a player that provides resistance, holding a hand shield and waste time or risk injuries with that. It's just you, the Difference USA machine. If you want to strike violently, you got to practice striking violently. So check out Difference USA. And then uh, Aaron Consulting, Dan Fodrickzee uh, is running a company that keeps coaches at the forefront of recruiting, right? It's about education, teaching people about the recruiting process, so teaching parents and players, but it's also keeping the high school football coach at the forefront of the recruiting process, which is why I partnered with Aaron Consulting and Dan, because what happens a lot of times is those groups like to sometimes take the credit for the recruiting process, and it's all about their business. What Dan's trying to do and Aaron Consulting's trying to do is keep the coach at the forefront. At some point, they need transcripts. They need to talk to recruiters. They're going to want to talk to teachers. They're going to want to talk to the athletic director. They're going to want to talk to deans or administrators. So at some point, the recruiting process has to run through the high school in the game of football. So we need to keep coaches at the forefront of it. So you can learn things about the NCAA timeline, important recruiting dates, how to build your college contacts. So make sure you check out Aaron Consulting, G-E-T-A-R-E-N, Dot com, see what they have to offer, all right? Keep coaches at the forefront of, rec of the recruiting process while educating families. All right, so a lot of times in the passing game, we get, you know, kind of confused with all the different things that are go going on in, in the modern passing game today. And three of the concepts that I kind of sometimes see people get confused, especially newer coaches, right? So guys that have been doing it for a while aren't going to get confused. They've been around. They've heard everything before. But I see some newer guys sometimes get confused with the concepts. And I'm going to stick to mostly the front side of the concept for these three concepts and, and tell you all you need to know about the front side, what's involved on the front side, because the back side can change from system to system. And then depending on what you're trying to do, full field, half field, you may be running some things that gives the quarterback options versus certain coverages. But today I'm going to focus mainly on the front side, right? So the first one I've got drawn up is the Mills concept. Okay, so anytime you hear somebody use the term mills, they are talking about an outside post with an inside dig or hunt route, whatever your terminology is for that. Okay, so anytime you hear mills, all right, on the front side, you can assume it's going to be an outside post with an inside, all right, dig or hunt route. Okay, normally it's paired with a shallow cross from the backside, and a lot of times you may see this concept drawn up as shallow cross. All right, Coach Spurrier made it famous uh, with, with, with Florida because Ernie Mills was a guy that was running the post and a um, and, and guy that was getting over the top, and, and so he called it a Mills concept, right? So that's kind of where it got its name from, but if you see a lot of people diagram shallow cross, it'll look very similar to this, right? But when you hear or see the term Mills, what you need to think about is the outside receiver is running the post, the inside receiver is running the dig or the hunt route, right? And you would want to do that versus teams that you, excuse me, you think 
are quarters concepts or two eye shells where you're trying to invite the safety to get down on the dig so you can throw the post over his head. Okay, so anytime you hear mills, you think of outside post by one, inside dig or hunt route by number two. Now, again, it's tied to shallow cross a lot of times, and you can get the shallow from the backside, right? And normally the back is going to get into the flat, all right, from the side of the shallow. There are some teams, especially like when I was playing in the early 90s in college, the back would be a check down guy that would then work his way to the flat, and he almost got a natural, all right, depending on how quickly the back could get out with no blitzes, you would almost get a little bit of a rub or a pick with the shallow and then the back. A lot of teams nowadays, if they free release the back, they may just push him to the side that the shallow cross is coming from. All right, so again, the backside today is not really my concern. You could do a million things on the backside. I'm just here to tell you what you need to think about when you hear these terms on the front side, right? So Mills is outside post, inside dig, hunt, whatever you want to call that route. Now, as soon as you hear the term dagger, it's the opposite. The dagger is going to be some type of inside post or possible choice route or seam read if you get middle of the field closed or a one high system. Now the hunt route is going to come from the outside receiver. Okay, even if you had it paired with shallow cross on the backside. Now what you've done is you've switched. So the dagger concept on the front side means the inside receiver is running the post or sometimes it could be seam read, okay? And the outside receiver is running the dig, all right? Or the dagger concept, all right? Again, there are so many different terms for routes and things that people, you know, use and, and you know, most of the time, if it's that 12 to 14 yard in-breaking cut that stays most of the time on the move. Again, some people will set a little dig in windows. Passing game is so evolved now, and there's so many different ways to do it. All right, to me, it's more about at least understanding terminology for younger coaches, newer coaches, understanding terminology so that when people talk, you know exactly what they're saying. If somebody's talking to you about a concept and that you don't see a drawing, you have to be able to relate what that concept is. So when you hear the term dagger, that's normally going to mean inside post, maybe seam choice, all right, if it's a one high team, all right, maybe they'll let that guy rip, all right, uh, you know, an uncapped area where there's grass. But the, the, the dig, my, t you know, old school dig, now remember when we used to run a dig back in the day, it was off of, all our routes were off post break. So when I was playing in college, our dig would be post into the dig. Now a lot of the digs you see are more speed cut digs, right, where they're rounded off and coming into the middle. But again, that terminology, how you run the route, that's up to you as a coach. That, that's up to everybody within their system. There's a million ways to skin a cat, and guys do it a bunch of different ways. Okay, so to me, it doesn't really matter. The bottom line is, when you hear the term dagger, all right, you are getting to where it's the inside guy running that concept and the outside guy running that concept. So essentially, dagger is just the inverse of Mills, right? So they're both ending up with some type of high-low on a quarter safety system, right? Some type of high-low read. And then if you incorporate, all right, the shallow coming from the backside, now you get kind of what I would think of as an inside flood concept, right? Or a middle-of-the-field flood concept. Because now we have three levels to the route that we are trying to high-low people on, right? Your traditional flood concept that most people would run would somehow get to where there's three levels that work their way to the outside of the field, okay? When you're talking about dagger and you're talking about shallow or mills concepts, now we're talking about getting to an inside or a middle flood because we're doing one route over the top, one route in that intermediate middle area, and one route shallow or underneath all that. Okay, but again, the back side of it sometimes can be, you know, its own concept depending on what coaches want to do, right? If you, you study a lot of NFL, college football, you'll see guys that are using this concept with something totally different over here, and they might be teaching their, their quarterbacks that, hey, versus this look, I love the dagger side, versus this look, I love a different side. A lot of times, traditionally, it's going to be paired with the shallow, but that doesn't mean it has to be run 
with the shallow. All right. And then the last one that I'm going to talk about today is when you hear people use the term drive concept, right? So anytime you hear the term drive concept, what you can assume is the shallow and the dig are on the same side. So the drive concept would be number one, all right, which you could consider the drive route, all right. Number one's got the inside to me, all right, the shallow cross. Right now, if you sit them down in windows, if you do different things with them, that's completely up to you. Everybody's different. But to me, it's similar in the shallow cross theory, but now the dig comes from the same side as the shallow cross. Okay, so now you get shallow cross and dig, and then if you wanted to build a post over the top, so a lot of times in the drive concept, you may get a third receiver out here, and maybe that third receiver can get over the top and make it the full concept. All right. If it's two by two, depending on the coverage you're seeing, you may get a flood theory out here where it's go or possibly post with the sail route there with drive on the backside. All right. And then depending on what the philosophy is of the coach, they're going to put the back where they want them to get whatever stretch they want on the defense. Right. So if the back was this side, you're creating that flood version on the outside there. Right? If you push the back to the front side, all right, for whatever reason you think you can manipulate coverage, all right, again, you're going to see your traditional theories of where people put the back, what they do with the back. Right? To me, it's all up to whatever you want to do as an offense. All right? Obviously, there are systems in the air aid shallow cross and the air aid uh, choice concept. Those are going to be run a certain way. Okay? But at the same time, there's a bunch of different philosophies of how to get guys open. And to me, in the passing game, that's really all it comes down to is, can you communicate to your guys the routes that you want them to run? Can you communicate to your quarterback how you want them to read it? And then can you use guys where you need them to get guys open, right? So you can be traditional and run it the same way most people do as a system. And most people's argument would be, well, if the air eight guys and Mike Leach ran it that way, well, then that's probably the way we should run it, okay? And there's an argument for that. But at the same time, if you wanted to push the back a different way for whatever the reason was, as long as you can teach protection and as long as you can teach the quarterback the stretches or the high lows that you're trying to create and he can read it the proper way, it really doesn't matter what you do with the routes. Okay, yes, there's a traditional theory. Yes, there's a philosophy. All right, but you can really do whatever you want with the concepts. Okay, you can do sail back here. You can do smash back here. You can do whatever you want away from the drive concept. All right, but the thing you need to understand, again, when you think drive, you're thinking shallow and dig coming from the same side. When you think shallow cross, the shallow and the dig are on opposite sides. When you think drive, okay, you think more of shallow dig on the same side. Very similar to when you hear people talk about levels. All right, levels is a very similar concept to drive, except instead of the shallow or the drive route, you're going to get the fin or the hitch and run option route on the outside. All right, so again, add another concept in there. Levels concept would be the five-yard fin with the 10-yard dig and the two-man levels concept. Okay, so again, it's all about understanding what people are talking about and breaking it down. So to me... All right, when I am listening to somebody without hearing or seeing a diagram, I'm sorry, when I'm just hearing words, if I hear Mills, right, I know it's post outside, and I know the dig route is coming from inside. Right? When I hear Dagger, I right away know that the post, or let's just say seam read, okay, is coming from the inside, all right, and the dig route is coming from the outside. So the post of the seam read is inside, the dig is outside, all right. So if, if I wrote it, when I teach it to kids, if I have the outside receiver first, all right, now I would say, okay, so Mills is post outside, all right, Dagger is dig outside, and post Seam read, however you want it, is coming from the inside. 
Okay? And then when I get to drive, okay, now that's going to be shallow or drive is coming from the outside. The dig is coming from the inside. Okay, so number one, number two, number one, number two, number one, number two. Okay, and then to me, the drive theory means that the shallow drive route and the dig are coming from the same side. All right, when I think about mills or shallow cross or whatever, all right, now those things are coming from the opposite side. All right, so the opposite side meaning the shallow and the dig. Okay. All right, so the shallow and the dig are coming from opposite sides. All right, so again, all right, when I think mills, I think post by one, dig by two, the shallow's coming from the other side, right? When I think dagger, I think post by two, dig by one, the shallow's coming from the opposite side, okay? When I think drive, I think shallow or drive by one, dig by two, and the opposite side probably has some type of different concept. All right, could you possibly run a mesh with that? Yeah, you probably could, and it ends up looking, you know, you could probably get away with running some type of mesh deal, and now this ends up looking like big spot, All right? So this looks like mesh with the big spot. And this side is technically the drive side. Why? Because the shallow, it's the shallow and the dig are on the same side. So when I, a lot of times when, when, when I do videos or I talk to people about concepts, sometimes you got to remember that you got to break concepts down for people and make sure they understand exactly what you're talking about so that if you didn't have a drawing, I always like to talk to people and say, all right, look, if we didn't have a drawing and we spoke football and we had a conversation could you visualize what I'm talking about? Can I visualize what you're talking about? To me, that's good teaching. To me, that's an understanding of the game of football. If I can visualize it without having to see it drawn, okay, then I can have a better understanding, all right, of the game of football. I can picture it. I can see it. Some guys love to have it drawn. That's great. If you're going to argue with somebody about a concept, drawing is always better because when you see it, you know exactly what you're talking about. Think about D-line and guys argue about, hey, it's a three, it's a two, it's a one eye, it's... Because not even D-line uh, techniques are, are the same across the entire football continuum, right? Everything is different with terminology. So drawings are always better. But if you were just having a, if I'm having a text conversation with somebody or somebody asks me a question on YouTube, you've got to be able to visualize things. So to me, when you break it down and you say, okay, Mills, Dagger, Drive. All right, what are the differences? Mills is post by one, dig by two. Dagger is post by two, dig by one. All right, and Drive is drive, dig, coming from the same side. The shallow comes from the opposite side in mills and dagger. All right, the shallow or the drive comes from the same side as the drive concept. Right, so that's a way that you can teach people conceptually. And again, the rest of the routes and formations, you could do this with motion and trades and you can move guys around wherever you want. The rest of the routes are all up to the guy calling the offense. Yes, there's a traditional way. When you run mills, you're normally running shallow on the other side. When you run dagger, you're normally running shallow. Do you have to? No, but that's normally what you're used to seeing. When you run drive, you can run it with smash on the other side or flood on the other side. All right, you can do things however you want to do them. But when you visualize the concept, to me, the best teaching is being able to tell somebody, all right, look, in this concept, when you hear mills, you think post outside, dig inside. When you hear dagger, you think post inside, dig outside. When you hear drive, you think drive and dig coming from the same side. If you can get guys to visualize that conceptually, now you can get them to understand what you're trying to do a lot better, especially if there's not a drawing, right? Because sometimes we don't always have drawings. So I hope this helps you guys out understanding the front side of those concepts. Um, I hear people talk about it all the time, and you know sometimes you'll hear guys ask, well, what is mills, what is dagger, what is drive? What do you think drive is? What do you think mills is? Some people will say, Mills is just shallow cross, and yeah, that's part of the concept, but the mills is the front side package. A lot of times the mills in, in 
the older days might have been ran with seven man play action protection and you were just trying to get the quarters concept high low on a safety and you didn't have all the other components to it, right? So when you think Mills, I think front side post dig. When I think dagger, I think front side, all right, post by two, dig by one. So the opposite of Mills. So Mills is post by one, dig by two. Dagger is post by two, dig by one. Drive is shallow by one, dig by two, dig and shallow come from the same side. So I hope this helps you guys out. Um, if you've been throwing a ball a long time or you've been, uh, you know, somebody that's involved in a passing game, you know all these things already. You probably have a better way of teaching them and a better way of doing it. This just conceptually for me helps people visualize the front side of concepts so that when they hear sometimes what they think are fancy terms, they can put a picture with it. All right, make sure you uh, always check out some of our partners, sting8740 at gmail.com. Email me if you're interested in any of the virtual clinics we did. I just sent in the last week, I sent uh, two or three guys um, the, the uh, clinic stuff that we've done. So 10 or 11 different clinics, 20 hours of football. All right, um, $15 can get you every one of those clinics, uh, every, every clinic, offense, defense, Everything you want, 20 hours of football, email me, sting8740 at gmail.com. Some of them are me doing uh, virtual clinics or webinars. Some of them are other coaches that I was in on the Zoom call uh, and doing them for the PlayFast website. So 20 hours of football for $15, not a bad deal. If you're in the offseason and you're just interested in that, make sure you check that out by emailing sting8740 at gmail.com. Game Strat, Dome Hats, Baker Sports, Difference USA, Aaron Consulting. Always check out the sponsors and the people that uh, are good to play fast football. I try to take care of the people that take care of me. All right, remember, subscribe to the channel. All right, turn your notifications on. You know every time we do a video like this or we jump on YouTube Live. I was just on YouTube Live Friday night. I like to do it once a week in the offseason. So at some point this week, we'll jump on YouTube Live again. To me, that's the best forum for the community to share information, ask questions, because you get more opinions than just mine. And there's other guys out there that can see the questions and they can answer as well and give their uh, opinion as well. So uh, remember, if you turn your notifications on, you'll know when we jump on YouTube Live. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the content, don't like the content. You're the viewer, it's your opinion, all right? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for people watching, so I'm certainly not gonna get offended by thumbs up or thumbs down, all right? And, and as always, um, you can leave a comment, any comment you leave, I'll try to respond to. I responded to two today on the YouTube short that I did uh, talking about the difference between a confused player and possibly a player that's scared of contact on defense and how you've got to navigate those because it's a really thin, thin line between the two. So leave comments. I like to interact with everybody that leaves a comment. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope the offseason is going well for you guys, whatever you're into. Hope you're healthy. Hope your team's doing good. Hope uh, strength and conditioning and all that stuff is going good. And I hope your off-season clinic stuff is off to a good start. All right, so thanks for everything you guys do for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I will catch you guys next time.